Hello everyone, I'm Max, that is Spec Guide. Today you join me with the Mustang Mach-E GT, but I'm not making this video about this car. I've actually spent time with the Mach-E before on out of spec motoring in Hawaii, very fun trip. But today I have the Mach-E, which is a CCS car, meaning it charges on public charging networks to talk about a problem that's affecting all kinds of electric cars right now. It's public charging. And uh, we have a lot to talk about, so buckle up or grab some popcorn, whatever the setting happens to be. And uh, let's talk about a solution that we at a spec hopefully are coming up with to uh, hopefully help address some of these charging issues that a lot of EVs are facing currently. So let's get into it. All right, so I'm driving on one of my favorite roads in uh, around downtown Boulder, Boulder Canyon Drive. And just join me for the drive here as I kind of talk about, well, what I'm going to talk about, which is going to be what we're doing out of spec to address charging. So it's been an issue that if you watch the other out of spec channels, you've seen us cover a lot nonstop. I mean, Kyle encountered a particularly nasty, uh, you know, uh, Christmas basically over the holidays when a lot of Electrify America stations had an issue in uh, freezing cold temperatures. Uh, so what we've done is create the service called Rate Your Charge. And the idea here is that we want to basically give the EV community a um, place to share their charging experiences for the sole benefit of the EV community. How are we doing that? Well, the idea of Rate Your Charge is that this is basically crowdsourced data. We're getting your charging uh, when you check in somewhere. We're getting a picture from you. We're getting a video from you. Uh, what that's doing is it's being put into a centralized area that we can provide a report to um, charging providers and hopefully improve charging. Because the reality is at Edispec, we have a pretty substantial network for EV drivers. Uh, people pay attention. The executives of charging companies pay attention to what we do. And for that reason, that's why um, I think Kyle thought up the idea of Rate Your Charge. And for the last several weeks, my colleague, Ryan Cassell, has been doing a really good job of basically um, summarizing these reports as we have them now. So let me describe exactly what Rate Your Charge is currently and what we hope for it to become. So currently Rate Your Charge is just a Twitter account and a Google form uh, that people can either mention at in a video on Twitter they upload or submit through a Google form if you don't use Twitter for whatever reason, um, you, a photo or a video of your charging experience. So let's say you check into a charger and uh, you want to basically uh, talk about how it went well for you or it didn't go well. And yes, we realize that when you do this, there's a negativity bias because when you go to a gas station, for instance, you don't report that it works. You'd expect that. Um, similar thing for charging. I, I imagine that we probably get more negative reports at Rate Your Charge because people are motivated to tweet our account and have the Rate Your Charge Twitter account retweet it uh, when they have a bad charging experience. But this is a Twitter account. What is it possibly doing? Well, like I said, these reports have been really helpful and we've actually been compiling them on LinkedIn uh, on the page for which, by the way, we have uh, followers from you know very important companies. I won't name them, but let's just say the major players in this space for charging, uh, they are paying attention. And we've noticed that when people submit a check-in on Rate Your Charge and there's an issue at a charging station, uh, let's say the card in charge for whatever reason, usually the fault of the stall, not always, but sometimes, um, that it gets addressed very quickly uh, because of our platform and because of our audience. So. It's not sustainable. We don't want this to be uh, the status quo forever for EVs, but the reality is this is where we are for, as I see it, the next several years at least. So that's what Rate Your Charge is intended to do um, right now as a Twitter account and a Google form where people submit stuff and we broadcast it. Now, we're hoping to do more. We actually want to make an app. We want to make it easy. And I can't give timelines for this. Ryan, my colleague, who's uh, unfortunately too sick to be with me in the car today, has been working really hard on this, contacting developers. We're getting stuff um, you know, underway. But making an app isn't easy. But we want to make this as easy as possible for you, for EV drivers, for people you may know, to spread the word about Write Your Charge. So as is right now, if you want to participate and you're on Twitter, feel free to join in, or I'll also link the Google form so you can submit your charging experiences on your road trips. We really think this is gonna benefit everyone. And um, I'll address the big elephant in the room because if you are an experienced EV driver or um, you've even watched Out of Spec Guide before, you've probably heard me talk about this app called PlugShare. And PlugShare, if we're honest right now, is kind of the best resource for the community at the moment because PlugShare is an app that does a similar thing to what Rate Your Charge does, but there's a gap that I'll talk about that PlugShare has that 
we're hoping rate your charge will fail. So plug share is uh, just crowdsourced data, right? EV drivers can uh, submit their check-ins on plug share and it's a rating system. So you rate your uh, basically, uh, you you rate your charge as either successful or not successful, and then PlugShare aggregates that into a score of 10. Now, there's a big issue with PlugShare that we've noticed, especially recently. PlugShare is owned by EVgo. Uh, I believe they have at least a controlling stake in it. But basically, EVgo, which is one of the big charging networks in the country, right? There's three major ones, Electrify America, ChargePoint, EVgo. Um, they have been involved in it, and that's a clear conflict of interest. And what we've noticed is that a lot of stations have what I would say is basically an inflated plug share score because uh, what they have done is they've said if drivers have multiple check-ins, um, then that's not valid. And what I mean by that is let's say you go to a stall um, of stations uh, and you try one stall with your car and it doesn't work. So you try the next one. It also doesn't work. Well, the behavior that Kyle thinks you should do, and I agree, the, um, the, the kind of we think you should do is report that as multiple failed check-ins because if multiple charging stalls aren't working then that's bad but plug share says there should only be one check-in for driver and they've been deleting uh basically duplicate reports among other things um and this is bad because basically it leads to score inflation for chargers and the consequence on the ground is when you show up with your car to charge at a plug share site um, or a, at a station that PlugShare said, you know, had, let's say, an 8.7 rating, very high on a scale of 10. Doesn't work. I'm sorry, that should be zero. As long as that station is down or multiple stalls at it are un unoperational, um, that's terrible. And that's where I think we're hoping Rate Your Charge can really succeed because we, you know, we're a YouTube channel. We don't have any affiliation with any of the charging networks, uh, or we're a series of YouTube channels, I should say. And because of that, we think we have, can provide a great opportunity here. Also, PlugShare does allow you to add photos, but with Rate Your Charge, we are mandating photos and even preferably video because we want real kind of tangible um, check-ins like that. And while PlugShare is useful in the simplicity of it, we think Rate Your Charge can really provide useful, instrumented um, kind of data, but also uh, chiefly, I think, just this anecdotal data, right? It's one thing for us to tell charging companies, oh, we've had this issue in press cars, or we've had this issue when we charge. But with Rate Your Charge, we're going to have, well, we already have concrete streams of video flowing in from all of you um, around the country and even around the world, even though this is mostly US centric, um, that uh, that's charging data. So let's say someone has a specific issue with a cable handle on their stall or a specific uh, way in which the station bugs out. That's now documented on video. And that's great. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that, you know, Kyle's only one person. I'm only one person. The out-of-spec team is you know, spread out, and as many of us as there are, we have limitations. However, there's all of you who can help us, and that's what Rate Your Charge is. It's this amazing kind of way to crowdsource it in a way we think is going to be more effective and more honest than PlugShare, and maybe even eventually more simple and more intuitive once we get our app um, off the ground and running. Currently, it is very basic, right? We're just this Twitter account and this Google form, but even in our basic kind of minimum viable product, um, stage at this moment, I think it's working really well. And it's been so cool just to see all the check-ins. And if Ryan was in the car here with me, I think he'd be the first to say that, you know, we learn, we're learning so much when every video we retweet, every check-in we get from, uh, from you all at home, that is really useful, not just to us, but again, chiefly to the charging companies who need to fix and maintain their stations. Uh, now, I wanna give a big, big disclaimer here, right? This is like, this is very well covered the issue of public charging. We talk about it on this channel a lot. Kyle talks about it in reviews. Even the mainstream has picked this up. Uh, Marquez Brownlee, big fan of him, um, KBHD, talked about this in an autofocus video, his channel where he talks about cars and electric cars. Um, this is being picked up by the larger technology EV community and even the mainstream in the news. Uh, that's why Kyle's original They Don't Work in the Cold video with chargers blew up. So it's very obvious that this is an issue, but I don't want to, I want to be, oh, 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 people have got to be careful on passing on this road. Anyhow, I don't want to over focus or magnify this issue because while public charging is something that absolutely needs to work, and this is why I'm excited about Rate Your Charge and what we've been doing, I do have to specify that, you know, let's say you're watching this, you don't have an EV, and this sounds like a nightmare to you. I'll be honest, it kind of is. But most of the time with your EV, you want to be home charging. And that can be different. If you have a garage, it's as simple as spending a few thousand dollars to install 
an EVSA in your garage. It's a lot of money, I get it, but so is a new electric car. And if you're buying a new EV, my candid, honest advice is, is if you have a garage, make sure you have a NEMA 1450, uh, basically 240 volt outlet, and you get that installed for home charging. Um, and if you don't, let's say you're in an apartment or shared living situation, you might have a charge point or some other kind of level two uh, basically charger near you. And if you do, please use it because uh, those are great resources. Basically, it's slower charging, but it's overnight. It's like your phone. You just kind of like want it to be as frictionless as possible. Once you get in the routine of that, it's so nice to wake up in the morning with an 80% battery and be set for the day, right? You're not visiting gas stations. Uh, so public chargers occupy this obvious analog to gas stations in the EV world, but ideally you don't have to use them as frequently. However, the reason rate your charge exists, the reason that we focus on this issue so much is because road trips are, I think, very high on the priority list for the American driver. Even if, let's be honest, most of us probably don't actually road trip that much. Some of us definitely do, but some of us don't. We just, it's, it, it's an aspiration. However, I think, you know, I, I'm legitimately, genuinely excited about EVs. I want them to succeed. I want them to take off. But I have to admit that even if I could, you know, even if I tell you road trips aren't common, you're not going to do many of them. You want to be prepared. And when you're on a road trip and charging goes, you know, SOL, uh, it sucks. It's not fun. And it might actually ruin your trip. Ryan Cassell, actually, my colleague, uh, when he and his girlfriend were heading out to California this weekend, uh, they decided to cancel their trip, uh, partially because they got sick, but also uh, because this car, when they checked in uh, with plug and charge, didn't work. Let me introduce plug and charge, by the way. Plug and charge is this great idea. I know I'm talking about a lot of things in this video, but I'm gonna break it down. Um, plug and charge is where I hope the future of charging goes. It is the standard based off a set of. Um, well, it, it, it's basically a branding for a standard called ISO 15118. Uh, and just if that name sounds unsexy and you're like, what the hell am I talking about? Keep listening. So plug in charge is the idea that you go to a station, you plug in, and your car just starts charging. It's authorized, it communicates back to the charger. You've already set up your payment with your vehicle's manufacturer, in this case, Ford for the Mustang Mach-E, or um, you know, let's say Chevy, whoever it was. Uh, Tesla does this already. If you have a Tesla, own a Tesla, or know someone with a Tesla, when you pull up to a supercharger, this is how their system works. Plug and charge is basically the open variant of this. It's gonna work on CCS, that port that every, basically every car that's not a Tesla uses in the US. Uh, so it's very exciting. And in this car, Ryan and I have had it work several times, but the experience I just described to you where he and his girlfriend had a failed charging attempt, that's when plug and charge didn't work. And that's a really frustrating issue. In my opinion, almost more frustrating than when you have to activate charging stations through their app because plug and charge is so nice. You get into this habit of I just pull up, I plug in. When it fails, let's say you have to disable plug and charge, you have to troubleshoot your car. That's actually worse than I think a normal charger that's not working. I think that is, if anything, more frustrating. So I really don't like when that's the case um, because if we're gonna promise this experience, that seamless you know, idea that if you just plug in, it works, just like a Tesla, we need to deliver. And frankly, Ford and everyone else, I'm not just gonna call out Ford, is not delivering there yet. And it's a complicated issue because it involves the auto manufacturers, it involves the charge point uh, operators, You know, who's at fault here, I don't know exactly. In some situations, maybe it's Electrify America or maybe it's EVgo. In other situations, maybe it is Ford, who knows? But the reality is, Ford's the one selling you the car at some point, they have to step up and take responsibility for this experience not working. Uh, and so long story short, I know I've wound up on a lot of topics in this video and hope maybe introduced uh, some concepts to you like plug and charge, rate your charge exists. And when you have an EV or for people you know who have an EV, we want check-ins. We want you to participate. If you are at all inclined, please, when you go to stations, report your experiences. And they don't have to all be negative. If you have positive experiences, great. Share those uh, with us too. They're useful. Especially as we develop this app and make the experience of using Rate Your Charge more friendly, um, just check in, make it a habit. And we're not, you know, I'm, I don't want to slag plug share too much. It's still as is the, the 800 pound gorilla in this space and use it by all means. We still use PlugShare a lot ourselves, but consider Rate Your Charge. I hope this is helpful. And uh, we always want feedback because Rate Your Charge is very much in development at the moment. So um, just send feedback. We have an email in our description, guide at spexstudios.com, uh, but you can also just comment on this video. We want to hear your thoughts on public charging and uh, the general EV charging experience. I know this is like, 
you know, this, this breaks my heart because um, I'll just say my boss, Kyle, he loves EVs. I mean, if you watch the out of spec channels, you know that. And frankly, all this charging stuff, I've seen it in him, has, has kind of dulled his enthusiasm. It hasn't quite dulled mine as much yet, maybe because I don't daily drive an EV, but it's just heartbreaking to see so much of this um, conversation about EVs just become dominated by charging. Again, like I mentioned earlier in this video, public charging on road trips or on highways isn't even the use case most of us are gonna experience most of the time in EVs. However, that doesn't excuse that when it goes wrong, when issues happen, well, that's terrible and we need to avoid it. So. Um, rate your charge exists. Please use it. Uh, please let us know your feedback. And uh, I'm looking very much forward to the app and all of the kind of efforts we go through. And even more so, I'm looking forward to maybe in several years, uh, I'm just trying to be realistic here, uh, charging just getting substantially better to the point where it's as reliable as a gas station. You pull in with your car, be it a Mustang Mach-E, be it a Chevy Bolt, be it a Hyundai Ioniq, whatever it is, you pull in, you plug in, and it works. Hey, maybe even plug and charge will work so you won't have to activate with an external phone app. Who knows? By the way, this whole charging activation thing I've been talking about, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, if you're lost on this channel, we've made videos on how to activate chargers for EVgo, Electrify America, and ChargePoint. So feel free to check those out. Anyhow, thanks for uh, bearing with my rambling here um, and joining me on this beautiful drive up Boulder Canyon Drive in the Mustang Mach-E GT. It's been my pleasure to join you. Again, I've been Max for that Aspect Guide. Uh, and yeah, Rate Your Charge is here and it's only gonna get better. So, and hopefully charging will get better with it as well. Thanks so much for watching and um, I'm gonna see you next time.